Hi there, Daily Gardeners. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you that this month, the month of April, is the Reviews for Good Month over at podchaser.com. And every time you leave a review and then I reply to that review, Podchaser will donate 50 cents to World Central Kitchen. And that's the organization that is providing meals to people fleeing Ukraine. And so far, they've provided over a million meals. So great cause. Take a second today, if you have a chance, and leave a review for The Daily Gardener over at podchaser.com. It's so easy to do, and so much good can come from it. Today's episode is brought to you by the Daily Gardener Friday Newsletter. You can sign up for the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about garden history and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer E. Blaine, and today is April 13th. Today in garden history, we celebrate the American physician, botanist, and polymath John Mitchell, who was born on this day, April 13th in 1711. John was educated in Edinburgh, and as a young man, he returned to Virginia and settled in Urbana, about 70 miles from Richmond. There, John began botanizing throughout Virginia, and he corresponded with most of the colonial botanists of his time. For instance, John sent a list of Virginia plants to Peter Collinson for inclusion in his book on New World Plants. And both John Mitchell and John Clayton were botanists in Virginia. The American writer Henry Theodore Tuckerman wrote, Mitchell and Clayton together gave to the botany of Virginia a distinguished luster. John also corresponded with Linnaeus, who named the sweetly trailing partridge berry Michella Repens in his honor. And that name, Repens, means creeping, and it describes, of course, the growing habit. Now, partridge berry is in the matter family, and the berries are red and sport two bright red spots. By 1746, John and his wife had returned to England, but sadly, they arrived without a penny to their name after John lost all of his botanical work on the voyage over. Their ship was essentially hijacked. Well, after that, John paused his botanical work, and he helped create a very important map that helped England identify their colonial territories over in the States. Well, the map took John five years to complete, but once it was finished, the Mitchell map became the most thorough and largest 18th century map of eastern North America. The Mitchell map is also regarded as one of the most significant maps in American history. Published before the Seven Years' War, the Mitchell map was used in the Treaty of Paris in 1783, and ironically, it helped define the boundaries of the newly independent United States. And here's a fun fact. Lewis and Clark used the Mitchell map on their expedition. And today we also celebrate the birthday of Thomas Jefferson, the American statesman and founding father who served as the third president of the United States from 1801 to 1809. And he was born on this day, April 13th in 1743. It's a well-known fact that Thomas loved plants and gardening. Thomas once wrote, The greatest service which can be rendered any country is to add a useful plant to its culture. And Thomas also wrote, On a hot day in Virginia, I know nothing more comforting than a fine spiced pickle, brought up trout-like from the sparkling depths of the aromatic jar below the stairs of Aunt Sally's cellar. And today we celebrate the birthday of the American writer and poet, Helen Maria Winslow, who was born on this day, April 13th in 1851. 
Helen's nature poems are charming. Here's the beginning verse to her poem, Spring Song. The bluebird from the apple tree pours forth a flood of melody. The sky above, as blue as he, shimmers and shines an azure sea. And the robin sings, what cheer, what cheer, summer is coming and spring is here. And today is also the birthday of the American writer and photographer Eudora Alice Welty, who was born on this day, April 13th in 1909. Eudora wrote about the American South, a place she knew well. Her novel, The Optimist's Daughter, won the Pulitzer Prize in 1973. Eudora once famously wrote, One place comprehended can make us understand other places better. Today, Eudora's house and garden is in Jackson, Mississippi, and it's a National Historic Landmark that's open to the public. The home was built by Eudora's parents, Christian and Chestina, and Eudora lived in her family home for 76 years, and she wrote all of her major works there. In the 1930s, Eudora hosted the Night Blooming Serious Club of Jackson, Mississippi. They came to her moon garden to watch the annual blossoming of the flower known as the Queen of the Night. Eudora learned to love gardening from her mother, Chestina, who designed the garden at the family home in 1925. The two women would spend the next two decades working in the garden, planting, digging, weeding, and harvesting. Today, the gardens are beautifully restored based on Eudora's photos and letters and Chestina's garden journals. Now, the garden is not a show garden. It's a gardener's garden, and that's the way Eudora wanted it to be maintained for future generations. Eudora clearly found inspiration in the natural world. Over 150 different plants are mentioned in her various works. In 1931, Eudora and her mother turned to the garden after the sudden death of her father. During that time, Eudora wrote short stories, including a little story inspired by the garden called A Curtain of Green. Looking back at the years following the loss of her dad, Eudora wrote, No experience could have taught me more about grief or flowers, about achieving survival by going. Your fingers in the ground the limit of physical exhaustion. Well, gardeners love to say that gardening is cheaper than therapy, and Eudora herself knew that garden time had benefits that were on a higher level than other activities. And she once wrote to a friend, I like the work in the yard, never get tired, and can think out there. Or maybe it's dreaming. In her 1946 book called Delta Wedding, Eudora made another charming reference to the garden. She wrote, The evening was hot. It was the fragrance of the lemon lilies that was cool, like the breath from a mountain well. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, The Garden of Lost and Found by Harriet Evans. So this book is an oldie but goodie. It debuted in 2009, and this is a fiction book that should definitely be part of your collection. Now, as with most of the fiction books with a garden theme that I recommend, this book has a beautiful cover and bonus points. It has the word garden in it. And in addition to all of that, Harriet Evans is a wonderful writer. Now, the publisher of this book pitched it this way, one house, 
four women and the secret that binds them all. Lose yourself in this unputdownable tale of the enduring power of family love told by three generations of extraordinary women. Now, I bought this book back in November of 2020, and I know that because Amazon is kind enough to remind me of that when I went to look and see what year this book was published. Anyway, I remember reading it over Christmas break, and I would say it's part mystery and part thriller. So if you're looking for something to read over spring break, or maybe for a beach read this summer, this would be a wonderful option. And by the way, this is a big book. It is 560 pages, and I'm going to give you just a little bit of a teaser here. It starts out, the setting is at Nightingale House in 1919, and then it says, Liddy Horner discovers that her husband, the world-famous artist Sir Edward Horner, burned his best-known painting, and it was called The Garden of Lost and Found, and he did that just days before his sudden death. And then we're off to the races. So there you go. Anyway, you can get a copy of The Garden of Lost and Found by Harriet Evans and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $2. Now, I'm going to warn you, as I always do, that if you want to get a paperback at that price, you're going to need to act quickly because there are only so many of these used copies. And when they're gone, they're gone. And then you'll have to pay full price. And it looks like the hardcover is going for anywhere between $10 and $70. So there is incentive for you if you're looking for a fun fiction book for 2022. All right, we end today's show with a botanic spark from H.L.V. Fletcher's book of garden gossip called Purest Pleasure. And I thought I would end the show with an excerpt from his chapter for April. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I stumbled on a little exchange that he described between himself and his 70-year-old friend and fellow gardener named Micah. And I thought this little story was adorable, and I wanted to share it with you. Anyway, here's what he wrote. I had been working in the garden almost as long as the light lasted, and when dusk fell, I went down to see Micah. He had a sore throat and was treating it with boiled nettles, and we got to talking about them. Everywhere now, the young nettles were growing, their strong new growth making a mat of rich green. To most people, accustomed to think of them only as weeds, the sight is hateful, but I don't know. As weeds, I do not find them very hard to destroy. As herbs, there are less handsome plants. And it certainly makes an excellent green vegetable about this time of year, when the tips are young and tender. The Romans are said to have used it like spinach. Micah had a riddle for me. He asked, what did Adam first plant in the Garden of Eden? I tried a number of plants and then gave up. Well, what was it? He grinned triumphantly. His foot, of course. Well, that's it for today's show. Just remember that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. The next time you're over at Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and then request to join. And if you'd like more of The Daily Gardener, you can subscribe to the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. And don't forget that you can also show your support for the show by using the Buy Me a Coffee link over at the website or in today's show notes. This is Jennifer Ebling. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day.